hi there. <laughs> Bet you didn't think you'd see a video from me today. But here we are. If you've been following me on Instagram, then you know that I spent all of January watching nothing but Jake Gyllenhaal movies. For no reason. I, um, I just said to myself, you know what, I really like Jake Gyllenhaal and I have not seen a lot of his movies, so I'm gonna watch uh, Velvet Buzzsaw was the one that actually got me into it. I was like, everybody watched this the year that it came out and I missed it, so let me get down on it. So I uh, I watched Velvet Buzzsaw and then I'm like, oh, Okia, or however you say it, Okia, um, the one with the big pig thing that was on Netflix and I was like, hey, why don't I watch this? Because I've been meaning to ever since it came out. So that started a trend where I was just like, why stop here? Why don't I just watch basically every single Jake Gyllenhaal movie? That's what I did. And if you check out my Instagram, X-Team Featurette, um, I have most of them. I made like, well, actually I think all of them except for proof, I have like little reviews that I did um, saved in my stories. So check that out. But I made a list and I have, um, I watched 29 and I'm going to watch 30 because I've not yet watched Proof. I don't know why. So let's just go down through a list um, in order that I watched them. Like I said, I watched Velvet Buzzsaw 1. Um, it was great. He played like this, um, this like art critic or something. And at first I was like, eh, I don't know. It was like kind of, I thought that it was going to be like, you know, really, um, I thought that it was going to be boring and lame, but then it turned out, you know, not being boring and lame. And Jake Gyllenhaal played, um, he was like a very, he had um, like very effeminate, um, like mannerisms and stuff. And I don't know how he pulled it off so well. He's just a great actor. But then after watching that, I watched Okia or whatever. And that was about the, uh, the big pig, um, the big pig thing was like farmed as livestock. And he played basically like a, a nature, like one of those nature TV people, but like a real terrible person. Like, um, so that was really interesting. He was a character. He was definitely a character. That was funny. It was a very funny role, but the movie was not funny. It was very depressing and um, yeah, made me ultra vegetarian for a while. So. Um, the third movie that I watched was Nightcrawler, which was amazing. He played um, like one of those people that goes around uh, taking video for the news crews of accidents and stuff. Very interesting, very messed up role. Really enjoyed that one. I have some of these, I think 11 of them I put stars next to and that's one of the ones that I put a star next to because it was so good. Um, and also there's a star next to Nocturnal Animals. Um, really loved that one really uh kind of identified with the girl in it because she was kind of you know a terrible person and i was like oh, i kind of feel that way so um really loved it there was a lot of symbolism in it um and jake gyllenhaal plays a writer and the main the main chick like he's hit he's her husband and uh her well he's her ex-husband and he's a writer it's about a story that he writes for her very good. Love. I'm gonna. I'm gonna rewatch that one for sure. Loved it. Um, there's also a star next to Brokeback Mountain. I never watched that. I know that it didn't win an award, but it came close. And uh, I mean, all I knew about it was like, oh, gay cowboys. I was like, okay, whatever. It's a cowboy movie, and one of the cowboys is gay, probably. I don't know. That's all I knew about it. But then I watched it, and I was like hmm, like, this is actually not a cowboy movie. It's, like, a gay love story. Um, and there was, like, so many, um, it's just, like, a lot of, uh, symbolism and meaning to it. It was very romantic, very sad, um, but it was so beautiful. And, uh, aside from, like, the symbolism and, like, the story and the acting being beautiful, like, the cinematography was great. Uh, amazing movie. Um, it's super long, but as I was watching it, it felt like it flew by because I was just so into it. So um, I'll be watching that again in the future, too. I'll probably buy it on like Blu-ray or something just to you know, be able to see the cinematography, how it's meant to be seen. It's awesome. So um, yeah, that was not what I was expecting at all and um, very pleased with it. Number six was Zodiac. And, you know, I'm Zodiac was like the first serial killer book that I ever read when I was like eight was about the Zodiac. Um, 
so I knew like the backstory. I was very familiar with it, but um, this was it was very very good for uh, for you know like a Hollywood movie. It was um, and not like a not a documentary. It was very um, I feel like accurate. So and it was like an interesting take because it focused on Jake Gyllenhaal's character, who was more like a amateur sleuth. So that was really good. Really enjoyed it. Um, did not enjoy and one of the only movies that I didn't enjoy with him was The Day After Tomorrow. It was like a, um, first of all, disclaimer, I am not into natural disaster flicks and that's what this is. But um, I just felt like this had no character. Like it was, um, it, it's like somebody sucked the life out of it. It's like very flat, very two dimensional, very, um, it was just like sedated. Like I think I wrote in Instagram, it's like somebody gave it a sedative. It was terrible. Um, the picture was cool. It was very interesting to like see the picture. Um, but other than that, I will never watch that again. No, no, no. I know Joe Martinez, you're a huge fan of that. <laughs> you can keep that one all day and all night. Uh, Demolition was number eight. I have a star next to that. Mr. Uh, Greg Garwood gifted that to me and I forgot it. I brought some movies that um, I have physically and I totally forgot that I had that physically because it came with a code and I watched it digitally. So thank you for that, Greg. He shared it because he loved it so much and he's a huge Jake fan also. Um, that's a great movie. It's about a guy who uh, loses his wife and his his life uh, falls apart, you know? So, so much great symbolism in that too. Um, and then also about a guy losing his wife. I watched Southpaw, number nine. Um, uh, man, that was, that was really good too. And that's actually still on Tubi right now. If you watch this today, it's, um, you can watch it for free on Tubi with ads. It's going away though soon. So you better catch it. It is so good. That one warrants a buy. Um, I'm going to be buying Southpaw too, whenever I get the chance cheap enough, but oh, man, that's the one where he like, he plays a boxer and, uh, my dude, my dude was, uh, Kyle was telling me about how it was, um, it was like the the part was written for Eminem and I'm like I'm t I totally can see this it was absolutely written for Eminem but uh Jake Gyllenhaal totally pulled it off he has this like you know this thuggish kind of like hood accent where he's like you know talking like a talking like a bro or whatever and there's only like I think two instances in the entire movie where he where he actually pronounced something correctly and I'm like it's not very hood of you Mr. Gyllenhaal but oh my god, it was it was heart wrenching. I thought that it was just gonna be like another fight movie or something, and it was so much more than that. So highly recommend Southpaw. It has a star, and then it, what also has a star is number ten, Bubble Boy. I um, that was not a first time watch. I've seen Bubble Boy before, and I love it. It is like the perfect comedy, and the soundtrack is amazing. If you're like me you will love that soundtrack. It is just like, uh, if you were in uh, high school in the early 2000s, then you'll be all about it. So, so much fun. $500! <laughs> and um, number 11 was Brothers. And I thought that was going to be like a war movie or whatever, but it was actually more about the brother that stayed home from war, which was Jake Gyllenhaal. His brother... It was Toby McGuire was um, in some sort of the armed services and he was like somewhere stranded somewhere overseas. I don't know. He was like taken prisoner of war, I think. And he wasn't able to see his wife, you know, assumed dead. What happens? What ensues? I don't know. You'll have to watch Brothers to find out. I'm probably not going to watch it again. I remember the child actors in it were amazing because um, Toby McGuire and his wife, whoever that was, I forget, had... Um, kids and Jake Gyllenhaal was like the brother slash uncle man there was some uh high tension and uh high emotions but yeah I'll never watch it again uh it was a good movie though decent it warrants a watch but not a rewatch in my book uh number 12 was Accidental Love um aka Nailed man that was fun I don't have a star next to it but it, it was a lot of fun I wouldn't say that it's like a great comedy it was one that you'll have to like read my story but it had like um the production like stopped and started like a lot so um I don't know it was it was just weird it's about um a girl that gets a nail in her head and like Jake Gyllenhaal said you have a nail in your brain and it's neurologically making you a whore well it's kind of the plot point there so 
it was a fun comedy. If you like comedies, check it out. Uh, 13 was stronger, and that was about the Boston Marathon bombing, which I, I don't watch the news really, so I don't really know a lot about it other than it happened. Um, so this taught me kind of more about that. So that was very informational. Very good movie. Um, 14 was October Sky, which uh, was about Sputnik. And... <laughs> across the October sky in West Virginia. They were watching it and uh, prompted, I forget his name because I, I literally watched this in January and it's now the end of March and I'm recording this video. So I don't remember the guy's name. I should because he's literally like, like foundational in NASA. Like he's, I don't know. He's the dude that like got somebody uh, kicked out of their grant. If you uh, follow internet news that happened but um, very interesting based on a true story movie. Um, very beautiful, really awesome. Uh, so that has a star next to it, I loved it. Uh, Wildlife was number 15 and that was about, it was, it was about divorce and I wasn't really expecting that, but um, it was good. It was just like the child in the relationship, like Jake Gyllenhaal's kid was so like depressed and muted and like didn't talk like, I'm just like, oh, I'm here and I'm a kid. My parents are getting divorced. And I'm like, can you not have any emotions, kid? Like, what's going on with you? So, um, wildlife was good. I, I actually really enjoyed it, but um, probably won't watch it again. And uh, 16 was Prisoners, which was very interesting. Loved it. Um, I won't even talk about it because I don't want to spoil it. Just, uh, it has a star next to it. And so does Enemy, number 17, which Enemy was great. That was probably, out of all of these, out of all the movies I watched, aside from Donnie Darko, because that has a, a spot in my heart, so Donnie Darko and then probably Nocturnal Animals and Enemy um, were my favorites. So Enemy was amazing. It was so good. Um, and it was about, um, it was about a guy going through like an identity thing and it was very, um, very surreal. So very much, very much recommended Enemy. 18 was Everest, which was totally boring. Another disaster type flick because there's a bunch of people going up on Everest when they shouldn't. Really hated it. Didn't enjoy it. Jake Gyllenhaal's character was the best part because he was like some kind of a bro, but uh, we'll never watch Everest again. Didn't like it. Source Code, number 19, was uh, like one of those Groundhog Day type movies, but it was very enjoyable. Moonlight Mile, number 20, was about... Jake Gyllenhaal's character dealing with the death of his girlfriend and um I guess how people deal with grieving so that it was very it was a it was a good movie it was like kind of pulled on your heartstrings a little bit uh 21 life um I also have a star next to that because it was it was such a surprise like I, I I'm so skeptical about new age science fiction and um I was really skeptical, but it turned out being great. Loved the alien in this. Very reminiscent of Aliens. So um, I will be buying that. End of Watch 22 is about some uh, cops and not your typical cop movie. Um, yeah, very, it, it was a wild ride. It kind of, kind of reminded me of um, the show Cops, but you know, obviously more in depth, but a lot of, a lot of great acting there. 23 was Jarhead, you know, uh, I, I don't really know what to say. It was definitely not what I expected. Um, was expecting a typical war movie and it was more about the life of being a Marine. And, um, I feel like it, I talked to my dad who, who, you know, is a Marine. I guess you're never, you never, uh, aren't a Marine, but it was, uh, I guess it was very accurate. Um, so it was good. I'll, I'll probably watch it again. Um, really unexpected. Not not really into war movies and stuff, but Jarhead was great. So Love and Other Drugs, number 24. It, it's about some dude that works at like a pharmaceutical company and his girlfriend has Parkinson's. I'm like, uh, it just made me really depressed about the pharmaceutical industry. So sorry, Love and Other Drugs, but I didn't find you charming. Number 25, Prince of Persia, Sand of Time. Um, it was fun. I mean, it was like a big blockbuster movie is what I expected. Um, 
never watch it again, but it was a cool watch. Number 26, I watched Donnie Darko with the commentary. I have the Arrow release, and yes, I'm getting the 4K, so um, I'll be, you know, talking about that in the future, but the commentary is great, so listen to the commentary if you haven't. Uh, number 27 was lovely and amazing, and these next couple, um, Physical Media Man sent these to me. I bought them uh, from Physical Media Man's store. He has some awesome stuff, so check him out. I'll link to you. And um, this is a really, 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 this is, this has the x Team featurette seal of approval because it is incredibly awkward, very awkward movie. There's a scene in this where Jake Gyllenhaal, um, I guess, is experiences statutory rape. Very awkward movie. If you've seen this, please comment because I want to talk to you about it because it's so, there's so much to say. Um, 28, Rendition, which is in a blockbuster case. Rendition, oh my god, I did, I did not like this. It's about some dude that I don't even know what he does, if he works with the CIA or what, but something about Egypt, I don't know. I really didn't, I didn't, I didn't care. It didn't, it didn't grab me, so I'm not into that, but I'll keep it. And then The Good Girl with Jennifer Aniston, I really enjoyed this. Um, it's, it's so weird because it's not like a black comedy and it's not like it's it's not like a, a typical rom-com but um it's very realistic um so it, it's about relationships and it's very realistic but i will leave it at that and then i have not yet watched proof but i want to and i just i don't know i wanted to record this video but i haven't watched this yet so i will it's next on my list it's number 30. i hear it's amazing so um that is my list Jill and Hall january and uh yeah it was a wild ride it is not over i was not gonna watch spider-man 2 because i hate uh <laughs> uh comic book movies not into that and plus i wasn't gonna pay like ten dollars to rent it so um if somebody wants to donate that to me i'll watch it and give you an update thank you for taking the time to watch this video i made one surprise and um don't expect it again for a very long time but i'm still here uh follow me on instagram if you want to see what i'm watching or uh, i guess i have a letterbox now maybe i'll link to all, all these things down below but um and all my dudes too i'll link to all my buds and um till next time bye